In this video we will show how we can use companion software with Stream Deck hardware devices to control QTimer. First a couple of words about companion. It has some very nice features. Perhaps most importantly, it turns the family of Stream Deck hardware devices into remote controllers for a lot of different software and hardware. Secondly, it allows you to control QTimer from a remote location through the local network. And you can control different devices and software from the same controller. Now let's see how we can set this up. Okay, so now when you launch the GUI, you get to the connections. And here, you can search for QTimer. And when you add QTimer, you must plot in the IP address of where QTimer is. And for now, it's, it's very simple because in this video, we'll just have it on the same computer. And then you can use the local address, which is uh, shown here. Now everything is okay, we have connection, and let's go to the buttons and try to fill the page. With QTimer we made it quite easy to insert the buttons, we created presets for everything. We start by adding some commands here, just by dragging and dropping. Now we can go to the emulator and see how this works. We have the fire next, and the Q next, we can pause it. As you see here, we also have an indicator that it's paused with, with the color. And we can restart. And this button lets you jump in the list. So let's say Nils is sick. We can just go down. And uh, here I have the names so that we're absolutely sure that what happens when you have fire next, it's Jens. So we have this confidence. And you see the colors here, uh, now it's uh, orange because I forgot to put down, down the warning. Um, the colors here and here will be identical. So you don't need to configure anything to get the right colors. So let's put the warning on a more sensible value, like uh, 130. And you'll see it will jump back to the normal black and white. In version 2 of QTimer, you can also trigger individual timers and not just use these global commands. And let's see how we do that. So here in the presets, we have the fire with ID command. And if you look closer at this, you see this ID field. That by default, it's one. And what this means is that now when I push this button, it will trigger the timer with ID number one. And here you can see we already pre-made these IDs with one, two, three, four. So that this ID here, it matches this ID here. And we have some feedback that shows here the ID with name and ID with background. And here is Ole, it's the same. And you can see that because this is the next timer, this one will have this green sign color. So now let's go to the emulator and see what happens. It will fire this timer. And just to give you an example, it will fire this timer regardless of what is currently the next one. And now we have created more buttons with every timer that is in this list. And this means that if you don't want to use an ordered list, but just want to use start the timers randomly, this is a way to do it. And if you want a little bit more control, then instead of firing the timers directly, you can just assign what is the next timer and then use the fire button to fire it. These are just some examples of how we can control QTimer using companion software. And there are a lot of other commands and buttons that we didn't have time to go through in this video. We hope that these features will be useful for professional audio video engineers who want ultimate control of their countdown timers. Take care and see you again soon.